I'm Dan Ackerman, and with me is Jason Heiner, who is in charge of reviews and advice here at CNET, and we're here with what we think are some of the best laptops of CES 2020, and I'll tell you why we're talking about these particular guys. It's yeah. because we spent a lot of time earlier this week talking about a lot of the concept pieces and prototypes, the folding laptops, the things with double screens and things that pop off. Um, we decided for this show, which we do every year, to focus on the real workhorse laptops that are actually going to come out in stores and you'll be able to buy and do practical laptop-y things. Yeah. So you know, the cool thing is there's self-driving cars and huggable robots and all kinds of stuff here, but this is the thing you're going to be spending your day on getting your actual stuff done, right? So it still matters a lot. <laughs> And, and you'll say, oh, okay, I got myself something cool and new, I guess. It's not a robot, but, you know, <laughs> it, it, I, I, I can shop online with it. That's right. Uh, the first one I want to talk about with you is the latest version of what I call a very good iterative laptop in that it gets a little bit better every year, and they've done that for so many years, it's almost the platonic ideal of a 13-inch laptop, and that is the XPS 13. Yeah. I've got the latest version right here, um, and it's... A pretty darn good, very light, 13-inch laptop. And over the years, they've shaved the bezel around the screen It's looking away. really good. This thing is really thin and light. I remember when the last iteration of this one came out, you saying, you know, because you've been reviewing these for years, you saying, I, I, I've, um, I've run out of things to ask for. That, that they keep, you know, um, the things that we say it still needs, they keep adding and keep adding, and it's gotten to the point where this is just a really functional, really, really usable laptop. Uh, the big problem always was because the screen bezel was so narrow, they put the webcam down below, yes, and that yes. was the old no shot, and they moved it back up to the top, so I thought, okay, what more could I possibly ask for? Well, now they've managed to make, make it an IR camera, so you can use that Windows facial recognition login, and I may be the one guy who actually uses that. I think it's great. Yeah, it's great, I mean, and people have gotten used to it on a lot of the phones. Um, the ob obviously, the iPhone's been using it for a few years, Google Pixel now, as well as Samsung, so it's, uh, it's getting to where... Uh, people are getting used to that, and they know how to use it. There are some quirks with it that you have oh, to know, you know, your face and how far away you need to be and all of that. But once you get it down, it can be just super, super convenient. And the other, the other interesting new addition for this year is the 13.3-inch screen. It's now a 13.4-inch screen. <laughs> that one... Tenth of an inch. But it's something. It's a bigger Big. screen, so you've got to give them credit for that, and that's right. why I continue to love the XPS 13. All right. Tell me about this next guy here. Yeah, so this is the Samsung. Uh, I want to get it so you can see the, uh, the cool red color on this thing. Um, this is the Samsung... Uh, Galaxy Chromebook. They've put the Galaxy, which is of course super popular in phones, they've brought it to laptops. And this thing, uh, I was not expecting to like as much as I did. Um, obviously, a Chromebook is a Chromebook in many cases. They're aimed at low cost. You and I both recommend a lot of Chromebooks to people, especially people that are going to be calling us for tech support, yes. because then they're hard they, to screw up. They are hard to, yeah, exactly. And every time you reboot it, it, it boots really fast, and it's sort of a new, a new deal. But what they've told us, uh, what we've learned is, and looking at the market stats, is more and more people are buying these things, not just in education where they have 60% market share, but to, to use as their own laptop. So people are wanting, if you're using a Chromebook, you want something that has a little bit of oomph to it and some pizzazz because still a lot of the local processing still happens on this machine. You want a nice screen, yep. and you want a nice keyboard experience. You flip it around so we can see the, the keyboard is so great. Yeah. And just the contrast there between the different shades of red. Now, of, co of course, a lot of Chromebooks are $200, $300, maybe $400. Yes. We both recommend the Samsung uh, uh, Plus or Pro. The, uh, they're, they're two mid-range Chromebooks to a lot of people. Yep. They have a stylus built in. They're very nice. They're about four or $500. How much is the Galaxy? This Chromebook? one is nine ninety nine. So there's the there's the rub. The thousand dollar Chromebook question. Companies have tried to solve that for years. It's true. This is like the spiritual successor to the original Gal mm -hmm. Google Pixel. Yes. Right. It, it, that was a, a nice Chromebook. Really, really uh, great build. Uh, this is half as thin as that, um, and half as heavy. I, I like this one a lot better. Yeah. This I would say. 
I could see this as a thousand hour Chromebook. The I old the old Pixel book, I couldn't really. It's true. It has a uh, a card slot, an SD card slot. It's got um, USB C. It also has a stylus, so you, you can pull it out. Uh, for those who are are fans of the Note, uh, mm -hmm. the Galaxy Note, uh, it has that same uh, functionality. So it, it's it is. If you want a, a, a Chromebook, this is one of the best ones you're going to be able to to buy. If you're if you're a worker, uh, a consumer, and you really want a nice one, this one is uh, is the top of the line. Look at that. Yeah, I feel like everyone who's seen this this week has come away very impressed. Like, ooh. I and, mean, it's one and of the... this has been one of the kind of like more desirable new laptops here. From a design standpoint, that's exactly it. That one of the so best much. designed laptops of all, in any category that we've seen this year. I mean, laptops so all generally do the same thing, and for Chromebooks that goes even more so. So good design counts for a heck of a lot. Very good. All right, so next... HP Elite Book. Yes, this is the Dragonfly. It's one of their business laptops, um, and it adds a couple of new features that I think are pretty interesting. Uh, first of all, it's got this SureView technology. Uh, they've had this in some products in the past, but this is a slightly newer version. So I hit the I hit the screen like this, and if you're looking at it from an off I angle, can't see it. you can't see what's on the screen. Yeah. And then boom, there you go. So that stops the old airport somebody peeking over your over your shoulder and 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 stealing your password or reading whatever you're. Uh, that's always a big deal. So that's I number love one. That feature. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like this is one of those things. Like, how did we not think about this before? Uh, because there are things. I mean, there's times when I'm on a plane and I'm looking at documents or pulling stuff up, oh, and yeah. I'm kind of like. Gosh, I really hope that there's nobody next to me that you know uh, could read some of this. Dare I say the perfect solution for for open office problems? Yeah, an open office is a, that's a good point too because there are times when you have to deal with whatever confidential information. You know, for in our case as journalists, sometimes we're dealing with stuff that's under embargo, and we're looking at that's what I'm thinking of when I'm on plane. I was thinking more shopping and, and like, job hunting and, and yeah. goofing off, but yes, <laughs> that too. So yeah. So if you're very excited about your SureView laptop, but you get so excited, you run off to tell somebody and you leave it behind, you don't know where it is, guess what? This is the first laptop with, you ever see those little tile trackers? Of course. That you put on great. your keys so you don't lose your keys? This yeah. has tile technology built in from that company. So this is a tile trackable uh, laptop. It's and I would love to see that, frankly, in every laptop. Because I, I'm always losing stuff left and right. That's another one of those things of like, why didn't we think of this before? It's a pretty small chip. It's technology that's easily integrated into a device of this size. And so uh, what, a, what a terrific idea. I think their design, HP's design on these um, uh, is also really solid. Uh, we've given them good marks for a number of their laptops in recent years. And, and for so a business laptop, this is pretty slick looking. Yeah, yeah. For a business laptop, very thin, very light, looks great. Uh, and, and I think it, it also has a very sort of almost like pinstripe sort of look to it, business kind oh, of look Oh, very buttoned it. down, yes. So and, of course, this guy, at some point in 2020, I don't know exactly when, is going to get a 5G option. Excellent. So that is a big keyword we're going to be hearing a lot about this year. So uh, I think business laptops are going to be one of the first places you start to see that. Some nice innovations in that one. So way to go, Dragonfly. Now, All right. something a little bit more fun here. Yeah. Big time. And this is from this is from Acer, and it's part of their line called the Concept D line, and it's really meant for designers and creative types uh, in a very professional sense. Uh, this is a Concept D7 Easel Pro, and it's called the Easel, and this is a hinge they've had on a few products in the past. Um, a while ago, really, but I haven't seen it lately. So the screen goes like this. I'm going to do a little click right here, Ooh. bring it forward, Flippy. and there you go. You could go all the way down here like this. Yeah. It'll fold down into kind of like a tablet. But I just like putting it like right by the keyboard there. And then you can pull out the little you, stylus. You're draw, aren't you? And you can draw on the screen. Here, hang on. I, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Very go good. Go to town. Uh-oh. There we go. Okay. Very, uh, uh, oh, very original. Yeah. All right. CES oh, 2020. Excellent, excellent. I'm going to do my little... Uh, Every you time I draw, uh, I try a stylus thing. I can't draw, so I just draw the same little cartoon guy I've been doing since like the '90s. Uh, I'll give him a bow tie today. Oh, nice, hey, nice, and fluffy hair. <laughs> uh, so these good. are these are really aimed at at, at high end uh, design professionals. It's got an Intel Xeon processor, which you do not see very often outside it's of hefty for a super, laptop. Yeah. Uh, and it's got NVIDIA Quadro RTX graphics, not the regular consumer level. Um, and, of course, it's, a, it's one of those, uh, it's a 4K screen. Yes. They have the Pantone certification, but a lot of laptops have that. Yeah, it's a very marketing term kind of thing. But I, I, it's hard to tell on the video, 
but the screen on this it looks so is great. really nice. Um, it, it's really uh, very high definition. It looks very uh, um, easy. It's easy on the eyes. Uh, it, it's not super bright. It's just the colors are um, are really well saturated at, at just a really nice level. So I love it has an Ethernet port. I know that's not very 2020, but there are times, especially if you're doing work like this mm -hmm. on a big laptop, you know, you're probably dealing with big files and you're going to love to have a, a gigabit Ethernet or, or 10G Ethernet uh, to be able to plug into. It also has hardwired on the side, you know, the HDMI port and display port still. So this really is aimed at, at high end designers, engineers, artists, photographers. Um, this is a really nice if you're. Uh, Actually, different ways nice to laptop. play around with the shape and the form and, yeah. and design things. I mean, that's what we saw with a lot of the folding laptops and dual screen laptops, reimagining the shape and form of a computer. And this does a lot of the same thing by having the screen pop out and be able to reposition itself. If you're doing a lot of pen work where like, you're um, e either drawing or a lot of photographers do that where they take the pen and they edit their photos with the pen, uh, this is a nice option. Uh, it, it reminds me, too, of like with Apple with the new... Um, feature that they have where you can have your uh, iPad sidecar right, yes. and, and you can use that. Um, it is kind of nice to have it directly on the screen though and not necessarily have to do it on a second screen or have a second device to be able to do it. So it's a good idea. And almost every PC company is definitely targeting creatives now. True. So it's, so it's nice to see cool new designs that take advantage of that. They buy big laptops, expensive laptops, they and they do. replace them fairly often. And they try so. to get the company to pay for it. So <laughs> That's right. There's a big budget out there. All right. All right. This is one of the cool new gaming laptop designs. There were not a super ton of new gaming laptops here. There's a lot of good gaming hardware, yeah. a lot of good gaming innovation, but individual laptops, not that many that really caught my eye. This is one that did, and I specifically sought this out to bring this here. Uh, this is the Asus ROG is Republic of Gamers. It's their gaming line. Uh, this is the Zephyrus uh, R14. So it's a 14-inch gaming laptop, and you don't see that very often. Most Usually of bigger, right? 15 inch or yeah. 17 inch. Uh, so to squeeze that that down into a 14 inch screen size and this is pretty compact for a gaming laptop it's actually pretty it light also feel that it is if, uh, you know one of the things i liked which is sort of strange is i sort of like the bigger um space bar oh yeah um, yeah the it's big easy to find almost uh, mechanical style keys they also did a nice thing for us if we can see the, the oh, it has this cool feature um, on the back <laughs> where it has all these little micro spots there you can um, put a custom message yes. up there you know your gamer tag or, a, or, or just a pattern of lights and stuff like yeah. that here, I'll, I'll try to catch a little bit of the shadow so you can so uh, they can see it. Uh, they, see they, it. They a little a, bit there. A nice R G C net on there. Thank you. So you can program that to to put whatever message you want on the back in these little micro lights. It's kind so of fun. The reason why they're able to get it down this small is um, they've they've got a new version of the AMD Ryzen CPU in here. That's oh, one of the excellent. new announcements here yeah. at, at CES. So this is one of the flagship laptops with it. And you can get up to a RTX 2060 graphics card in here, which is perfectly fine. I, I wouldn't want that in my super high-end 17-inch gaming laptop. Yep. But for a 14-inch laptop, even a 15-inch, uh, you know, that's, that's perfectly fine. And I play a lot of games on 2060 laptops. Um, so in terms of something different in gaming laptop design, where everything kind looks and feels the same. Yeah. I, I, I like this guy a lot. It, it, the, the compactness is really interesting because, uh, you know, there are times if you're a gamer even, you're not going to want to carry that bi those big laptops they get, those big gaming laptops. They're, they're super heavy, not easy on your back when you're throwing it in a backpack. So like that a lot. Also, again, build in um, HDMI, uh, mm -hmm. build in USB-C. Uh, so this is a this is a solid rig. Regular yeah, USB. Also regular yeah, gamers USB. are some of the last people who really need all those uh, ports and connections and still want them. Yeah. So they're helping keep it alive for the rest of us. Good stuff. All right. And then finally, let's talk today about a laptop that really brings into focus a lot of the important trend-setting things that are going on. This is a Yoga from Lenovo. It's yeah. a storied product line. That means it's got the 360-degree hinge, and uh, you know that goes like this. And we've seen these for years. I love the the hint. The way that they've innovated this hinge is, I think, a lot better. I remember it's developed a lot over the years. Exactly. Everyone else makes a 360 laptop now, but these are the first guys uh, who really went mainstream with it. 
And uh, what this version has is number one, it's uh, one of the only, it's one of a handful of Qualcomm powered laptops, so not Intel based. So and we've arm. seen a few of those, and yeah. they have some real advantages. They run really long, uh, low power consumption. Um, you know, uh, always they're really they're really built for always on connectivity, uh, and that's why it's important that this is a 5G laptop. Yes. It's probably going to be the first 5G laptop you can go out and buy. Okay. Um, and it's the only one so far that combines the Qualcomm, the ARM platform, and 5G. So it puts those two things that we've been talking about together in one product, and it's also a great example of that form. Yeah, and obviously we haven't tested this yet, but I was impressed that you put it on the list because you've been skeptical of ARM laptops over the years, uh, especially Windows, yes. you know, running Windows. And I remain so, and maybe 5G will be the combination that it needs to really be universally useful for people. Yeah, very good. I, this is a, a classic brand. Like, the, the Yoga brand has done a lot. It's obviously influenced uh, laptops, as you mentioned, uh, Dan. So uh, it, it really is good to see. This is another one. The design is really solid. It, it's another one. It's a little bit heavier than, than some of the other ones we looked at, but you still have to feel really good when you, when you look at the design of this one. Um, it's, uh, it's got a lot going for it. So. Uh, you know, you're going to be pretty happy. You fold this into tablet mode. Uh, it's also one of the ones that I feel like where the um, uh, the finish of it is, I, I can hold this and, and like read a web page mm -hmm. or read something especially um, in either uh, portrait or landscape mode and, and have a good handle on it. That's the hard thing about some of these when they fold over. I don't always feel like I have a good place to right. put my hands. And, and because they've been doing this longer, I feel like they have a good sense of making these so that the places that you're going to grab have some nice tactileness to it and, uh, and get a good grip. It's a subtle thing, but it's, it's something that, that shows that, that they've been doing this for a while and are the leaders in that. And I like that they put it in the, uh, the, the mainstream consumer yoga line and not just shunted off the 5G stuff and the Qualcomm stuff yeah. just to business-only laptops, uh, which, which are not always as cool looking and as nice. Uh, they just put it in the product that really anybody might like. It's true, and the, one of the interesting things about 5G to watch is, one, you know, the 5G or, or LTE even mm -hmm. today in laptops is a lot more common in Europe mm -hmm. and in uh, Asia because they don't necessarily make you buy like a $10 a month plan That's the thing. At, yes. to your to for carrier. You can buy a SIM, and that SIM gives you a certain amount of data. Say it gives you, you know, five gigs of data. That might last you four or five months, months yeah. and that's perfectly fine. And a lot of people are more comfortable doing that than adding on another fixed cost or mm -hmm. bumping up the price of their already really expensive. Same thing um, with the LTE you know, iPads plan. and the and getting your Apple Watch on the plan and everything. Yeah. that's the big question to mark about about this 5G laptop. The other one, any of them, is what's the 5G service going to cost you per month because you're adding an ongoing cost to that. And if we had a way to do it, yeah, just by a SIM card, that would probably make a lot more sense to people. Yeah. That's why I think everyone just tethers to their phone instead of, uh, in, instead of getting uh, an LTE or a 5G connected laptop. I'm always in the cab with my phone in one hand, flicking the, uh, uh, the, the sharing off and yep. on, Same. and trying to get my laptop to recognize it all so I can uh, you know, use that phone data. It's a pain, because that was one of the things we talked about the original Google Pixel, which has now been you know, six or seven years ago now. That was the best thing about that product. It was heavy and it was expensive, but it had LTE built in and the fact that it could easily, um, and it would automatically move between, is like, oh, you don't have a very good Wi-Fi connection right now. We're gonna um, flop move you, you over, over yep. to, uh, to LTE. And it was really uh, effective in doing that. And so um, along those lines, and, and we have a story coming up out about this, You know, one of the potential disruptors when we get to 5G and LTE laptops could be Google Fi, because mm -hmm. remember, they've done some interesting things with, uh, with data plans. And so they could have an interesting say on some of this uh, in, in 2020. We'll, we'll see how that goes. But look for an article on, on CNET about that coming up uh, here as we finish up CES. Cool. Well, we got a great collection here. Thanks to uh, all the companies for bringing these laptops by yeah. for us to show off. Big time. And uh, that's it for the best laptops of CES 2020. You can find all of my laptop coverage for CES and the year ahead at CNET.com. Of course, I'm Dan Ackerman with Jason Heiner. Thanks for watching.